So, okay, how about the people who are, I mean, and I'll go back to my folks who are from Ghana. I'll call them out. Now, most people are just like, well, there's not the opportunity here. I don't know what to do. Or folks that I've met that are from here, you know, they'll be like, well, my parents did not give me this. You were lucky you got to be drafted. You were from Minnesota. You got to a great school. You didn't have to go through the same struggles. And you telling me, yeah, just go do it. I can't do it. What is, what do you tell me? You already made your decision. Where did I make that decision? Welcome to the Superhuman Mindset. Today, I have this amazing gentleman with me, and he is a superstar. And I am excited to spend time with him and then pick his brain a little bit. But first things first, though, I have to tell you a story. All right. How we met. All right. So we um, trying to sell my house. And then all of a sudden, you know, when you put your house on the market, especially in this hot market, you have tons of people calling you. Everyone wanting to be your agent, right? So I get this phone call, pick it up. And then this lady goes, hey, sir, um, introduces herself. And then she goes, well, we have uh, been looking in your area. We find that we saw that your house is on the market and me and my husband want to sell it. So when can we get together? And I was just like, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I said, well, I am uh, working with my kids right now. Can we have a conversation later? She says, what time? Literally putting me to the corner. So I just said, all right, maybe right around two. She says, all right, two o'clock to 2.30 work for you? I said, yeah, sure. I mean, I have been in sales before, walking door to door, banging on people's door, trying to sell them. And <laughs> that right there was a total sales pitch, but it worked and I could not say no. That's right. <laughs> Next thing I know, uh, she calls me at that time. We schedule an appointment and I had lined up five agents that I was trying to okay. pick from five. They came in and this was back to back to back. So they came in, her and her husband came in. And as soon as she walked in, she goes, um, are you ready to sell this house? Because I know that guy is not coming back. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And three months later, I mean, seriously, once they put the house on the market, within the first, and I kid you not, guys, within the first 15 minutes, we were completely booked. I remember there was the guy over there to try to do the pictures. The person had to get out so we could show the house. So anyway, I I'm just getting so much into this right now. Super amazing. I am excited to have Mr. Eric Weingarten here with us. Uh, his wife will probably join us some other time, but today we're going to talk about Eric. Eric, awesome. welcome to the Superhuman Mindset. Thanks for having me, Felix. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, just to say a little bit about you as a, a past client and uh, now a friend, um, it's uh, pretty impressive to watch you have grown over this time frame that we've known each other exponentially. And it's been a lot of fun to be a part of it. So uh, thank you for having me on here today. And hopefully I can add a little value to yourself and your, uh, your, your, your viewing audience. Oh yeah. We, we are ready for all the value that we can get today because to get time Good. on this man's calendar takes a lot. So guys, <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, please click on the link below, make sure you subscribe and grab a notebook and a pen because this is going to be epic. This is the part I did not tell you. This man is a pro baseball player for the Philadelphia uh. Police. <laughs> so, I mean, we cannot start the conversation without going back into how did that happen, Eric? Um, how did that happen? So ever since I was little, I always wanted to be a professional baseball player, professional athlete. And um, ever since I could, I could think about this, my son, he's, gonna, yep. he's, he's the next on the list. But... Um, <laughs> But, um, so, you know, all my efforts and all my focus went into that. And, um, so I, and I ran into some roadblocks, you know, um, mm. I think the interesting part about life is that, you know, you can achieve anything that you want. It just not, might not be given to you in your time frame, mm. Right. And, um, 
<laughs> that's the thing that we don't have control of is the time frame, right? We can always associate a, a, um, a time frame with a goal so that we have a plan to walk out. But the only thing that stops you from ever achieving what you want is you quitting. Time is irrelevant. I, you know, I heard this somewhere. I can't remember where I heard it, but I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. Right. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, so I, I, I <laughs> guys, yeah. you know, I, I'm just going to be jumping in here because if I let Eric go, we're going to have to, every single sentence, this man says every single line, you have to take a pause <laughs> And then try to have him debunk it. What does it mean? You never lost a game. You just ran out of time. Well, I think it's interesting, right? Because everybody's always competing, right? And I think, and guys, take it, take everything that I say with a grain of salt because these are my beliefs, right? Yep. If you choose to insert them into your life, be my guest. If you don't, you got the wrong guy. You know, you can follow somebody else, whatever it may be, right? So, um, you know, my belief is that you're never competing against others. You're only competing against yourself. Mm. Right. I mean, here's the problem, right? I've played a lot of games. Yep. I've gone into a lot of listing appointments. I've done a lot of stuff where if I'm competing against somebody else, I go through highs and lows like nobody's business. Um, but if I'm always just competing against myself and the game can, the game never ends, then I always am on a consistent plane, right? I'm, we talked about this before, Felix, we're always in a consistent meditation yep. versus coming in and out of that, that meditation of which we call life. That's um, right. So uh, when I was in high school, I, I hurt my neck playing football. I lost all my scholarships. I didn't have anywhere to go. Um, I wasn't highly recruited because of that. I literally had compressed this in my four or five uh, in my vertebrae, uh, my four and five vertebrae and lost the use of my right arm for about six months. Um, so consequently, I ended up walking on a junior college I didn't know anything about. I literally just looked up who the number one junior college was in the country at the time. And I went and called the coach and said, hey, I'm going to walk on. I don't have anywhere to go. And um, so he said, yeah, come on down, try yeah. out for the team, see if you make it. Well, I ended up making the team. Um, and uh, I was going to junior college down in Arizona. I was from Minnesota. and. Yeah. I was going to go tear that league apart like nobody's business. Well, when I went down there, I didn't realize how good baseball players from the South may be, right? Because <laughs> they're outside all year round. Yep. So, um, you know, we ended up having four guys drafted off that team, which was the most in the Southwest region. Mm -hmm. um, nobody, ASU, U of A, uh, Cal, all the Cal State teams, everybody, nobody had more guys drafted than that team that I was on. Um, so I got exponentially better at baseball because I got hurt. Right. So, uh, after spending two years there and excelling and, uh, doing pretty well, really didn't have anywhere to go again, except for one place, um, which was New Mexico state. And it's funny. I met this coach, uh, who I thought was a reporter who came out to batting practice one day. So I was just trying to rip bombs, you know, in batting practice, whack, you know, smack him out of the yard. Well, this guy comes up to me after practice and says, you know, have you ever, you know, considered New Mexico state? And I was like, no, not really. I don't know anything about it. You know, yep. to be frank, I don't have any other opportunities. And he said, well, if I gave her a scholarship, would you do it? And I said, sure, I'll take it. Wow. <laughs> so, so I went and played at New Mexico state for a couple of years and then ended up getting drafted by uh, Philadelphia. And uh, which was the last team I thought I was going to draft by. I actually thought I was going to the Yankees or the A's. Um, uh, or St. Louis, uh, but ended up going to Philadelphia okay. and, uh, got hurt. And my six year playing with them got run over. I was a catcher, uh, career ended like that. Um, and, uh, then got into real estate after that. Um, so, so, so let, let's just slow this down a little bit. When you got to New Mexico, yeah, you were a kid from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you're in New Mexico now from there you are playing for the Phillies. Yep. How was that? What was that high for you? You know, it's kind of interesting, right? And I, I think about this uh, more than you would think. Mm -hmm. um, so when I got drafted, um, I got the call. You know, they call you. This is, you know, blah, blah, blah. General manager of the, you know, Philadelphia Phillies. We just drafted you, you know. And it was kind of interesting because I didn't really have a spike of emotion. It was just like, 
okay, well, get, send me my ticket. I'll be there. And it was just the next thing. Mm. And, um, it was just really interesting because I, I don't really celebrate very much. Yep. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, like, I'll, you know, give a fist bump and then move on. Yep. But, um, so it was interesting. Right. And then, um, you know, when you, when you go to that next level, right, you understand how much of a business it is. That's right. Um, and that there's always somebody coming for your job. Right. So, um, you know, and that's life, you know, hmm. that's life, you know? So that's why I say the game can never be played. Uh, one, it can only be played. Yep. And, um, you know, if you're always trying to compete against somebody else, you will always lose. If you're trying to measure yourself to somebody else, you will always lose every single time. So what, what wasn't there? Like, I mean, you were drafted, you were a baseball player. They had the guys making the most money in any sport, if I'm not mistaken. And you were one of them. Wasn't that like the best thing that ever happened to you? Because, I mean, most of us sit back and we're like, I, I really wish I could have played sport. And, you know, be drafted and be a professional, you know, something player. And you were that guy. Yeah. You were the um, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the, the opportunities that I was given because of that, um, that thought process that other people had was more uh, impactful in my life. Meaning I got to speak to a lot of kids. Um, I got to do a lot of camps. Um, I just, I got to help a lot of people um because of that status um if you ask me what the best part of my major league career was i would tell you that it was the locker rooms um did i hit walk off home runs and do all the stuff that people see on the tv yeah i did that but the more memorable stuff was you know the guys and you know you can't recreate that um that camaraderie that's right right you can't recreate that camaraderie anywhere right. else in the world anywhere else. I mean, it was just incredible. So, um, you know, it, having the opportunity to do all those things because of the platform that I was given was a pretty cool thing. So, so you have this, you have this mindset of everything is a game. Like life is a game. What does that mean? I mean, I've, I've heard it so many times. I've just never really understood it. What does that mean? Life is a game. Well, I think, um, you know, let me go back to that question you asked me because I started thinking about that a little bit more in depth of, you know, what it was like. And, uh, when I got drafted, I okay. think it was, it was kind of a letdown to be honest with you. Um, and here's what I mean by that. So when I got drafted, my whole point in life was to be a professional baseball player. That's right. It was everything that I did literally. I, I mean, hours by myself hitting in the basement, um, at my house, you know, just, which I put a big blanket up in my basement. I used to hit balls off the tee for hours by myself. Um, <laughs> I mean, everything was done to achieve that goal. Right. And when I got drafted, it was like, I did it. Yeah. Now what? Right. So I had this massive attachment to it. Massive attachment to it of which that's all you've worked for. Yeah. So <laughs> And we talked about this briefly, but I want to inter introduce this, this idea that, you know, you're, <laughs> everybody says when I get there, mm. right. When I do this, when I get this, I'll have this, when I do this, I'll be happy. You fill in the blank. It doesn't matter. The problem is, is when you get to those places, you never arrive. Oof. And I'll say that one more time. The problem is when you get to those places, you never arrive. And my attachment to those things made it a disappointment because it was over. Huh. So, so then I adapted this mindset of that. The game never ends. You just keep playing. It doesn't matter what it is. You just keep playing the game. There's no end. So there's no attachment to the, re to the result. So do you, so you ever arrive? No. Oh, if I'm going to arrive, I'm just going to get in the pine box and wait. Put me six down. If you can give me a little oxygen, a little water every once in a while, just wait till it's over. Why would I arrive? So, okay, let's, let's switch gears for a second. What does gratitude mean to you? Breathing. Breathing. 
That's it. Wow. If I'm alive and above ground, there's nothing more I can ask for. Hmm. So then if gratitude means breathing, what does money mean to you? Opportunity. Tell me more. All money is is just opportunity. The more things you can do, right? The more people you can help, the bigger scale you can work on, right? So, you know, I used to want to make a million dollars. That's right. Well, that came and went. Guess what? I'm still here. I'm not different. I am the same. People don't change because of the money they make, the house they live in, the goal they achieve, the car they drive. I'm just still Eric. Just that one guy who does these things. So what do you tell those guys who are saying, like, I want to be able to say, yeah, I made a million too. I, you know what? Do it. In there. I, I want to experience it too. Yeah, do it. I want to, I want to make a hundred million. See, the goal is the same. We mm. just want to keep moving forward. The difference between what I say, okay, to you, go make mm-hmm. that million dollars. Go make that fill in the blank number or 10 million bucks, hundred million, billion. I don't give a shit what number it is. Yep. Whatever that number is, you just can't attach yourself to it. It cannot play into your self-worth. If it does, it will destroy you. Hmm. So you, what I hear you talking about is the concept of be open to everything, but be attached to nothing. Is that the same thing? Yeah. The, yeah. Very, very. So very close. Right. Okay. I mean, the reality is, is that, um, you know, this, this stack of paper, right. What's the, di- what's the difference between this and a stack of hundred dollar bills? I mean, what's the difference? On it. <laughs> exactly. Just some ink. Yep. Right. So money is just paper. Why can't you can have as much paper as you want? You can have as much coin as you want. You can have as much whatever you want. God put us here to go to work. So my job is to serve as many people as I can. The more service that you provide, the bigger return you get. That's it. So, okay. How about the people who are, I mean, and I'll go back to my folks who are from Ghana. Now call them out. Now, be, most people are just like, well, there's not the opportunity here. I don't know what to do. Or folks that I've met that are from here, you know, they'll be like, well, my parents did not give me this. You are lucky you got to be drafted. You were from Minnesota. You got to a great school. You didn't have to go through the same struggles. And you telling me, yeah, just go do it. I can't do it. What, is, what do you tell me? You already made your decision. Where did I make that decision? I got this, I got this, I got this, I can't do it. Okay, that's your choice. So you, what, what you're telling me right there is, even by just uttering those words, I've already made the decision. It's over. Those wow. are affirmations. Those are affirmations of your state. And they will continue to be there until you change them. Wow. So how does one even be aware of affirmations of their state? Listen to yourself talk. Be present. What does it mean to be present? (laughs) That's a good question. So when you when you start talking about being present throughout your day, right? It starts off with the meditation, it ends with the meditation, right? A good meditation will last somewhere in the neighborhood of eight hours. Okay. So if you're talking about a uh 20-minute meditation, that that meditation should last about eight hours. Okay. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. One, one step at a time because you go fast. So you said you start off with meditation. You end with meditation. If I bring this back to what I know about the Bible, where he says, meditate on my way day and night. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we're talking about here? Yep. Think about it like this. You, you're, you have a, how long is usually your work day? Uh, nine. Call it standard work day. Eight, nine hours, right? Nine hours, yep. How long does a good meditation last? Nine, 15, 20 minutes. And how long do the residual effects from that meditation last? I haven't measured it. Eight hours. It's a proven 
proven deal how your brain works okay so and how your soul works mm. <laughs> in conjunction to it so a good meditation will last you eight hours right so that verse that you just cited in the bible is exactly yeah. right meditate on me morning and night morning night eight hours eight hours mm. Do it all over again mm. 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 right and when you can do that you can stay present okay and that takes training just like weightlifting just like uh, learning what to say when you're prospecting in your job um, whatever it may be practicing to be a baseball player it takes practice right it just doesn't happen overnight and this is where people get frustrated because if you want to change the physical world it has to start with your head why because i mean okay i wake up i start my day you know, my kids are probably waking me up daddy 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 let's go and then you are telling me yeah it's it's amazing you say you, you keep on saying this you just tell yourself it's fun it's fun it's amazing right <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure <laughs> but you are telling me that's when the days like i have to be grounded from that start and then yes. to, to be able to take control of that, it starts with my mind. So yeah. how do I take control of my mind? Is it only through meditation? Is it what meditation? Is it only through meditation where I can take uh -huh. control of my mind? But well, and even why? Why do I even want to take control of my mind? Like, why does it matter? <laughs> That's a good question. So, you know, so everybody's meditation can be deep different right okay. so you can use a headspace you can use some kind of breathing you can use a guided meditation you can use you can use music you can go sit on your deck you can and listen to the birds you can go whatever it may be right um, my choice is a guided meditation um, because um, I like to have a plan I like to have a coach and that's how I institute that in my life um, so uh, when you talk about um, how that plays into your physical arena right? right there's how do i explain this without sounding like a whack job um <laughs> <laughs> my my belief is that nothing nothing physical can happen without without your mental state being in the in the right mm. order okay so um, at least nothing sustainable. Okay. Okay. Can there be flashes? Absolutely. But then look what happens. You get tired and you fall back, right? Whether that's over a day, an hour, a week, a month, a year, whatever it may be, you get tired and you fall back is because you're not operating in the meditations because you're not, your connection with God is, is not here. You're acting on your own self-will, and self-will is short-lived, and it will die. But God's will never dies. Wait, though. We have been told, and I don't want us to get into the whole, you know, heaven and everything, but we've been told that, hey, you know, get on this earth, <clears throat> work, and, yeah, there's heaven waiting for you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't i just wait to go and enjoy everything when i die and go to heaven that's your choice <laughs> what other choices do i have well think about the lord's prayer right okay. as in heaven as in earth okay. as on earth yep. okay so uh, heaven is there yes but it's here it's here right now be present in it it's here I mean, look, all the past is, 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 is fear. Mm. That's it. All the past is, is fear, right? And all the future is fear. You can't control either one of them. One's done and one hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Right. So, you know, at the end of the day, my heaven is right now. When I go to the, the next phase of heaven. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm in pack my bags. Bye-bye. But right now, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be. Wow. So what I want to understand, I mean, there are tons of real estate agents, tons of them, probably the most um, 
<clears throat> probably the most, I, I think probably the most, the, the one that has the most people getting into now, especially with the market. Yeah. How is Team Wine Garden? I still remember COVID times, people were stuck at home. I was stuck at home. You guys were still set, buying, selling, like, like nothing had happened. What is different? My head. I don't have to believe the things of the world. They don't change me or who I am ever, <laughs> especially man-made stuff. It just doesn't interest me. So, you know, we learn how to do what we do, which is help people ultimately. And if I'm not doing my, my job, then that's when I lose. Wow. If I'm not doing my job, why am I here? Here. Wow. Wow. Why am I here? If I can't help you, why am I here? Wow. You know, and I think it's, it's, it's interesting because you look at like um, how I got into real estate, right? So I got into real estate because I got hurt. I went to school in Arizona because I got hurt. Right. I had all these setbacks to get to the places that I am. Everybody would call them setbacks. And are they difficult to go through? For sure. Yep. Right. I mean, let's be honest. But at the end of the day, it's just another door to be opened for the next part of your what you're supposed to do here. You know, so, you know, when I get out of baseball, I've had coaches my entire life. So what do I do when I get into real estate? I look for a coach. Tell me what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Tell me what to say, how to say it, when to say it. Right. And I literally just follow the plan. And I just do it at a very high level, which is all just consistency and being present in the moment. You, you, you are a big person when it comes to planning. I don't like planning for nothing. <laughs> is that also a choice? Why not? Most people don't plan because they're scared. Tell me more about that. You're either scared of two things. You're scared of success or you're scared of failure. And with the way that I think, neither of those happen. If the game just keeps going and the game never is won, it just can be played, how can I fail or how can I succeed? I just play the game. You see, most people don't put a plan on paper because they know that when they put that thing on paper, mm -hmm. they're not going to do it. And then, it. and then the fear or then the guilt and the shame start. And when the guilt and the shame start of which is a learned trait, by the way, and when the guilt and the shame start, it just pushes them further and further okay. away from what they want to do. Okay. So I want to be like Mr. Weingarten when I grew up. What do I start doing from today? I don't know. <laughs> what do you start doing? <laughs> you see, the best part about, you know, the best part about what I think, you know, is important to me is that I, I don't program anybody, mm. right? Mm. Um, you know, so the question is, what does Felix want to do? And when Felix says, this is what I want to do, then I can help you walk out a plan to achieve that. But then Felix has to take the action to do that. And Felix has to get back up the next day and achieve that plan, right? Achieve that next step in that plan, right. right? So, you know, when, when, you, when somebody asks me that question, two things come to my mind. Number one, you don't know what I've been through to get what I've got. Mm. Yeah. You have no clue. You don't know. So when somebody like in your first example from Ghana says, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I can't do that. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Guys, this has been amazing. <laughs> I mean, we can keep going and keep going and keep going. Mr. Weingarten, I think we're going to have to have you back. 
I love that. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, though, one of the questions that I'm always asking my guests is, what is your superpower? My superpower? That's right. I, you know, it's funny. I love Marvel movies, right? I'm like just uh-huh. Marvel nerd, right? So like, I love all those, you know, Avengers and all the different stuff. And um, my my favorite guy is is uh, probably Hulk. Okay. <laughs> I so I like superhuman strength, just like you. <laughs> superhuman strength. Now, what are the so? I have a kid brother growing up. He's only 18. What do I tell him so he can build the superhuman strength? Fantastic question. You know what I tell him? Here's if you want if you want to do something, okay? <laughs> if you want to do something for somebody, tell them to work their ass off and buy a house and work their ass off and buy another house and don't spend any money on yourself until those houses are paying you then you can have whatever you want how long is that going to take exactly that's the problem remember when we started this yes the only reason we don't achieve what we want is because people can't handle the time frames. Is there anything like cutting that time frame short? Yes, buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to tell me that, I mean, okay, let's go back. NIT, cybersecurity, whatever, any, any form of IT you pick, our goal as to make things more efficient. Mm -hmm. So if Eric is going to list a home at first, you're going to, you were, you would have had to put it in the newspaper, spread it around, get the word around. Now we can put it on a team wine garden site. Yep. People can find it easy. We can put it on Facebook. You can reach more people now. Mm -hmm. Now you telling me, okay, buy a house, uh, buy another one. Use that money to buy another one and then don't spend any money on yourself until that is paying you. There's no way to cut that short. Well, sure there is, but you got to do it. You got to do the first one yourself. You got to be in the game. Tell me more. What does it mean to be in the game? Well, I mean, think about it like this, right? So um, last night we're, I had a city council meeting. We just got a 125 unit apartment project completed. Now that that's a small project for us and it's a $23 million build. Okay. So at the end of the day, I started off, bought a house. Then I bought a duplex. Then I bought another duplex. Then I bought another duplex, right? Then I bought a fourplex. Then I bought a sixplex. Then I did this one. Then I built a 200 unit apartment complex. Then I did this. Then I did that. The problem is, is that you see Eric get 125 units approved and you say, I want that. The problem is, is that you don't have the experience to do that. That's right. Okay. So either you can work your ass off and invest in my projects. Or you can buy a house work your ass off, buy another house and get your ass in the game so that you can then do the things that you need to do later like I'm doing. Yeah, how I get that. But Eric has been doing this for the last 20 years at the very least. Yep. I mean, your first YouTube video was way back in 20, what, 11. <laughs> that wasn't even close to when I started. Exactly. I started. And I know we are running out of time here, but what I'm saying is if Eric was supposed to start all over again, would it take you that long to build that experience? No, because I already got the experience. See, that's the thing that nobody can take away. See, here's the thing. The hours and hours and hours of script play that I've done, the hours and hours and hours, nobody can take that away from me. Hmm. I, I have that. 
They can take my money. They can take my house. They can take, they can take all my, my possessions. That's right. right. Which is fine. I'll start over. I already did it once. I don't care. I'll do it again because they can't take my experience from me. The problem is, is that most people aren't willing to go through the experience or even start the experience. I think we're going to have to come back on that and talk about starting the experience. <laughs> Guys, I like <laughs> this has been a great conversation. Uh, Mr. Eric Weingarten, it has been amazing. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this. And I, I know we can keep going on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. Um, I'll let you have your last words and then tell people, you know, anything you want to tell anybody listening to you right now. And we can end with where they can find you. Um, I think uh, just in closing, um, just remember that life is full of experiences. Life is full of experiences. And whatever you label those experiences, whether it be good, whether it be bad, whether it be great, whether it be terrible, right? Those experiences are literally just experiences. They're another thing that you have to understand in order to continue to move forward. And here's the thing that I want you to remember when you're moving forward is you're either working on your plan to move forward or you're working on somebody else's. Okay. Mm. And what I mean by that is somebody has got a business plan out there and you're either going to be a cog in their wheel. Okay. Or they're going to be a cog in yours. So if you don't get started, just plan on being that cog and be fine with that and live your life and enjoy your experiences. But if you want more, it's just as easy as wanting less. Just as easy as wanting less. All you got to do is work on your mind. Wow. Where can people find you? Uh, Teamwinegarden.com uh, is our real estate website. All our information's on there. They can call me, do whatever they need to do. Uh, questions, I'll help people out all the time. So, Wow. Well, guys, it has been amazing. And thank you for joining the Superhuman Mindset. Mr. Weingarten, thank you. Thank you, Felix. You're the best. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you, sir.